Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Noise Power Ratio. In this presentation, we'll explain the fundamentals of noise power ratio measurements and how they're used to quantify intermodulation distortion in multi-carrier systems. Let's start by defining what we mean by a multi-carrier system. Traditionally, most RF transmission systems used a single carrier to transmit information. More recently, wider bandwidth systems now often use some type of multi-carrier transmission scheme. Examples of this include satellite systems, cable television, terrestrial microwave, and other systems. One issue with multi-carrier signals is that these carriers can mix with each other, creating intermodulation distortion, or IMD. This occurs primarily in amplifiers, but can happen in other components within the signal chain. There are two potential problems created by this intermodulation distortion. If the products fall outside of the carrier channel, they can create interference and lead to a decline in signal-to-noise ratio in adjacent channels. Another serious problem occurs when this IMD falls within the carrier channel itself and degrades its own SNR. This is a common concern in satellite systems. Since these links don't normally have direct neighbors, they could be affected by IMD falling outside of the channel. So how do we quantify this intermodulation distortion? The classic method for measuring intermodulation distortion is a third-order intercept measurement. This methodology uses two separated input tones and is the standard way of quantifying device linearity. However, traditional third-order intercept measurements aren't really applicable for multi-carrier systems with large numbers of contiguous carriers. Instead, IMD in multi-carrier systems, like many satellite applications, is normally quantified using a measurement called noise power ratio or NPR. Noise power ratio is tested by generating a wideband signal that contains a deep notch or unused channel. The signal width is usually the same as the nominal channel width, and a deep notch is created somewhere within this channel. This notch signal is then input to the device under test, for example an amplifier. Intermodulation distortion will cause the notch to fill with noise. This is sometimes referred to as spectral regrowth. We then measure this new notch depth using a spectrum analyzer. Noise power ratio is the ratio, in dB, of the carrier power to the notch power. A higher noise power ratio, or less noise in the notch, means lower intermodulation distortion. Note that the size, location, and number of notches are chosen based on a given dot or application, and NPR tests are often repeated with different notch sizes, locations, and power levels. Measuring the depth of the notch is relatively easy, so the real challenge in noise power ratio testing is the creation of the test signal. There are two main ways of generating a test signal when measuring noise power ratio. The first is using an analog signal generator, or noise source, combined with an analog notch filter. The second method is using a vector signal generator. We'll discuss both of these methods in just a moment. Ideally, we want the test signal to be as close as possible to the real signal that passes through the device under test. In other words, we want the same or similar modulation, peak to average ratio, etc., since these will affect the level of intermodulation distortion generated by the device. We also need the notch to be as deep as possible, especially if the level of intermodulation distortion is low. Depending on our test requirements, we may need more than one notch, or notches with different widths. And finally, we may need to change the position of the notch to measure the IMD at different points. We'll start by looking at how NPR test signals are created using an analog signal generator or noise generator. We'll start by creating band-limited noise, ideally with the same width as the channel that we're emulating, then use a notch filter to create the notch. The use of traditional analog notch filters is problematic, because deep, narrow notch filters are hard to make and relatively expensive. They also are usually not tunable, that is, they have a fixed stop band, so we need a separate notch filter for each notch frequency. One attempt at getting around these limitations is to create the test signal at one frequency and then convert it to the test frequency. This approach doesn't work well because the frequency conversion process creates intermodulation distortion and degrades the depth of the notch. Analog NPR test signals also suffer from a serious drawback in that they're not very realistic. A broadband noise signal will generally not create the same levels of intermodulation distortion as the actual modulated signal, especially when the modulated signal has a high crest factor or peak-to-average ratio.
the more flexible and more accurate approach to creating NPR test signals is using a vector signal generator. One of the main advantages in using a vector signal generator is that a realistic test signal can be used. That is, one that has the same modulation characteristics, peak to average ratio, etc., as the signals that are normally used with a device under test. It's also easier to create multiple notches, and we can typically get better notch quality, that is, steep, deep, and narrow. There are several different ways that we can create notches in the vector signal domain. The first of these is offline processing, where the notch is statically added to an arbitrary waveform file using tools such as MATLAB. Unfortunately, the pre-processing of the files is a non-trivial, time-consuming task and is also fairly inflexible. You have to create a separate waveform file for every scenario. An easier approach is using multi-carrier CW, where large numbers of unmodulated carriers are used to fill up the test signal bandwidth minus the notches. This is easy to do and much more flexible, but the resulting signal is less realistic. The third method uses so-called digital notch filters that can create notches in any type of signal. Digital notch filters are the preferred methodology for creating NPR test signals. They provide the highest realism because they can be used with the actual modulated signal types that are carried by the system. They're also completely flexible, allowing the creation of multiple notches with any arbitrary width and position. And they can be defined, updated, and enabled or disabled in real time, with no need for offline pre-calculation of waveforms. So in summary, noise power ratio, or NPR, is used to measure the level of intermodulation distortion in multi-carrier signals, and is a very common measurement in satellite systems. The test procedure is very straightforward. The notches are created in the test signal, and intermodulation within the signal components will cause the notch to fill. NPR is simply a measurement of the depth of the notch relative to the power of the carrier. The challenge in NPR testing is creating the notches in the signal, and this can be done in a number of ways. Analog noise generators and notch filters were the traditional way of measuring NPR, but this suffers from a lack of flexibility. Notches can also be added to arbitrary waveform files using offline pre-processing, but this is also a relatively inflexible approach that requires significant time and effort. A wideband signal with notches can be created using large numbers of appropriately spaced CW carriers. This multi-carrier method is flexible and easy to configure, but the resulting test signal may not stress the system in the same way as a modulated signal. A more recent advancement is the development of digital notch filters, which can place one or more notches in any type of unmodulated or modulated signal, with each notch having a user-definable location and width. Using digital notch filters provides the most accurate and most realistic test signals for any type of NPR measurement. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Noise Power Ratio. Thanks for watching.